Hello, I'm Dr. Kamani. Thank you for tuning in today. We are continuing the conversation about Black women healing from toxic work environments. We've been talking about um, the stages of grief in relation to toxic work environments, and we are continuing that conversation. So welcome to my channel, Lifting As We Climb Consulting, Wellness Services, where we focus on supporting individual and collective healing. So in what ways do we manifest healing? So I want to share some quotes with you um, in terms of framing our conversation today. Um, but I also want to just review the stages of grief that we talked about before. I know many times it can be surprising or confusing that you can experience stages of grief. Uh, in relation to a toxic work environment, because you say, well, I'm leaving the environment or I've left the environment, so why don't I feel good? Why don't I feel jubilant right now? And many times it's because we haven't acknowledged and we haven't processed that there is a stage of grief. So the grief could be the sense of, you know, when you came into the job, you may have had certain expectations and hopes for the job. You may have had certain hopes in terms of what you thought you could accomplish with the job. And it's recognizing that those things did not happen. It may also be that you had coworkers or colleagues that you trusted, who you thought were your friends, and you may have discovered that they weren't in, in fact your friends, and maybe they may have betrayed you in some ways. Or you may have coworkers or colleagues in which you were friends with them, and you may grieve not being able to see them and work with them every day. Mm -hmm. So that's where the stages of grief come in. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over a summary of the different stages of grief. Um, you can go more in depth to see or hear a little bit more about the stages of grief in my previous videos. So again, I'm going to give a summary of the previous stages of grief, and then I'm going to go into the last stage, okay? As I mentioned before, the stages of grief are not linear. So you can go back and forth through the different stages. You can stay at one stage longer than the other. So it's not linear, okay? So the first stage is um, denial. So denial in the sense of not recognizing the, the degree or the depth of the toxicity in your workplace. So many times we might think that the focus is one or two people, however, the system, you know, maintains that toxic behavior and many times condones the behavior in terms of not holding people accountable. So not recognizing the, de the degree, the depth of the toxicity. And also in terms of denial, um, not sitting with ourselves and being honest with ourselves in terms of the level of impact that being in toxic work environments can have mm -hmm. on us. Okay, so denial. Then there's anger. So as black women, we often are fighting against that stereotype of the angry black woman. And we often feel that, you know, no matter what happens, you know, that we have to remain, you know, a certain way. Or we can't acknowledge that we're angry. But I just want to just give ourselves permission and to say that we have every right to feel angry when we've been harmed, okay? So anger, the next is um, bargaining. So bargaining in the sense of trying to convince people in your workplace about your worth and constantly trying to show what ways you can contribute, what ways you're an asset. But when we do that, that can be very demoralizing and demeaning to constantly have to prove your worth especially with people or an environment where they're determined not to see your worth or they're determined to not see your shine or elevate your shine. Okay, so bargaining and also with ourselves, we may bargain, try to bargain with ourselves and say, you know, I'm just going to go into this job and just do what I need to do and I'm going to tune everybody else out and I'll just work harder. But the thing is that so many times we are already doing that. We are already doing our jobs at a very high standard. We're going in, we're focused, we're working, we're working, but then we work harder and we don't get the positive outcome, then that can contribute to burnout. And so recognizing that it's not that we're not working hard enough, it's that we're in environments where our worth is not being affirmed, okay? So the next stage is depression. So depression is, you know, coming to the realization that 
the environment really is not what you thought it was going to be. So it could be the depression in that sense, that disillusionment with the job. It could be a dis disillusionment with even your career or profession. I know that I have a friend of mine, when she was going through a toxic work environment, she thought about going to a totally different profession, right? So she thought about doing like interior decorating, which is totally different from the mental health field, right? I mean, it has can have mental health implications, but she was starting to question, should I even remain in this field? Okay, so the the denial, the, the the bargaining, the anger, the depression, right? And depression also could look like being angry with ourselves for number one, you know, being in these toxic work environments, staying in these toxic work environments, or a sense of anger with ourselves that we may have responded in a certain way to, a, to a, a toxic work environment. So we have to learn to release all of that because that is not serving us at all, okay? So the final stage of um, the grief process is acceptance. So acceptance in the sense of it is what it is, as my aunt says, you know, recognizing it is what it is. You've tried the best that you could, but it's not going to change. And it's actually harming you to continue to put yourself in a situation and trying to change a situation that's not going to change. Again, the system maintains the system, okay? So it is what it is. And also, I wanna share a quote with you. I don't know where I read this, but it really resonated with me. And the quote said, um, she sat with her anger long enough and she realized it was grief. So when you sit with your anger long enough, you recognize that there is a deep sadness in relation to these toxic jobs, okay? And then when we think about that and we realize that, we also have to be honest with ourselves. There's another quote that I love. Um, again, I don't know where I saw this, but it says, you cannot find happiness in the same place that you lost it. So if the toxic work environment is making you unhappy, it's making you miserable, and you're continuing to expend more time, more energy in this environment, it's really, it's really a lost cause, okay? So how do we get to that point of acceptance and realizing this is not the place for me? Or let's say that maybe that particular site is not the place for me, or maybe that particular program is not the place for me. But recognizing that because toxic work environments can have a profound impact on us physically, uh, psychologically and even spiritually. There was a research article that I came across that was really a wake up call. And it talked about how black women are dying at younger ages and developing um, cardiac issues at younger ages because of external factors, right? So in terms of toxic uh, work environments, in terms of racism. So, so many things that we as Black women go through, we have to be so aware of protecting our own health in terms of physically, uh, psychologically, and spiritually, okay? So I do want to offer you some healing tips, which is so important because, again, I want us to remember that we are not victims, we are victors. The fact that we are still standing, the fact that we're standing on the shoulders of our ancestors. So we are coming from a position of strength, but we also need to recognize and honor that we have been harmed. And when we've been harmed, we need to get that support, we need to be able to heal, okay? So I wanna offer you some a few healing tips. So number one, know your worth. Ground yourself in your greatness. So if that is, you know, recognizing your family legacy, you know, who do you come from? You know, remind yourself of that. I come from a legacy of warrior women. You know, I'm the daughter of Deborah, the daughter of Rosemary, who's the daughter of Victoria, who's the daughter of Anne. Very strong women. And so I remember my legacy. And I also remember in terms of what has been in my environment that has also grounded me in my greatness. So it's not by accident that I have on my shirt today. I'm a proud Spelman alum. And Spelman really taught me not only the importance of uh, academic excellence, but also the importance of sisterhood and recognizing where you come from 
and the importance of lifting as we climb. So as we move forward, in what ways are we also supporting other people and moving forward as well? So to do these things, right? So to ground myself in greatness, there are things that I put around me to help remind myself. So I have, you know, this Spelman Strong. I keep this on my desk to remind me. And I also have a reminder of my accomplishments. So I have my book, you know, Butterfly Landing, also on my desk as well. So to remind myself of my own greatness when people may try to be um, or, or try to make you feel like or question, make you question your worth. OK, so we need to remember our greatness, grounding ourselves in our greatness. So that's number one. Number two is that we need to seek support when we need it. So if that's family, if that's friends, if it's therapy, I will be doing another um, live at some point in the near future talking about um, the value of therapy, how to find, you know, a good therapist, a good match. So I'll do, a, I'll do a live on that. But therapy is so important because it provides an opportunity for you to be able to process issues that you're going through in a safe space, a safe, confidential space, okay? So therapy. And then the last is exit plan. So many times when we go through trauma and workplace bullying, toxic work environments, that is a form of trauma. So when we go through trauma, we, we often feel that sense of being stuck or we don't have options. I'm here to remind you, remind us that we do have options. And exit planning is so valuable. So there's a lot of different resources in terms of exit planning, um, career coaching, a lot of things like that. Um, I also have a few openings for a job coaching program that I have for black women. If you would like more information or you want to schedule a consultation with me about the program, please check in the description section. I'll have a link or you can also go to my website and click the section where it says job coaching program. OK, so that's a resource for you as well. Um, so in summary, I want us to think about and remember that toxic work environments absolutely can take a profound impact on us on so many different levels. And so the first part is that we have to be honest with ourselves and, and say, you know what, I'm being harmed by this environment. So I remember one woman said, a young woman said, um, you can't heal what you don't reveal. So if you don't recognize that you're hurting, then how can we heal? How can we be in a position so that we are healing and that we're able to pivot then to be in or to identify work environments that are more conducive to our well-being, right? So what work environments can we be in that, you know, really affirm us and really support our growth, our professional growth, really want us to shine? Because, you know, if we shine, the company shines. So in what ways can we be in those types of work environments? So for us, again, to remember the stages of grief, um, if you want more information about the, the different stages that I talked about earlier, a more in-depth um, discussion of those, please see my other videos on my YouTube channel, Lifting As We Climb Consulting, Wellness Services. Please subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications so you'll be notified each time I go live. So next week, you know, we're going to start having interviews with Black women who are healing in relation to toxic work environments, right? So they have experienced toxic workplaces in different ways, but we're also going to talk about and, and really pivot so we can hear from Black women in terms of their own healing journey. So we will start that next Monday. I hope that you are able to tune in. And I want to thank you for tuning in today and enjoy the rest of your day. Oh, and I also want to give a shout out um, to the black woman who created this shirt, um, Busy Beehive or Our Busy Beehive um, on Etsy. So I want to give uh, a shout out to her as well and to uplift her and, and her creative work. So again, I want to thank you for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.